Before we get started, we want to introduce ourselves so you can get to know us a little bit better. Um, so my name is Sydney Spessard and I am currently a senior. Hi everyone, I'm Jake McGee and I'm also a senior. I'm Nikki Tava and I'm also a senior. I'm Rachel Tool and I'm also a senior. I'm Zoe Shepard and I'm a junior. I'm Matthew Norman and I'm also a senior. We also have one more panelist. She's actually at a soccer game right now. So if Caroline pops in later on, she's Caroline Hugh and she is also a senior at Wheeler. We'll just go ahead and get started. First off, I just wanna thank you all so much for taking the time to be with us today. Something that's really important to us as um, students leading this initiative is the importance of conversation and considering varying perspectives and, and you know being comfortable with an open and honest sharing of opinions. So we're really glad that you're here and we're really excited to be able to introduce you all to this initiative and hear um, some of your points of view. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Rachel. Okay, so just before we uh, jump into everything, we did want to just kind of um, have a bit of a disclaimer here. So I think the first thing that's important to keep in mind is that this is the Wheeler Name Change group, uh, minus the one member we have at a soccer game. This is the core uh, group that we have. We are a group of student advocates and leaders who believe in this cause, and we've been working to voice the concerns that arose from our student body surrounding the name of our school, which we found was widely supported and was an issue that we felt needed to be addressed. Because once again, this all started back uh, last summer when there was a petition calling for the name to be reevaluated that now has over 5,000 signatures. That wasn't started by anyone in our group, but the petition did make us aware of that. And as student leaders, we decided to basically step up and represent our peers and the other community members to the community at large as we tried to pursue to discussion around this issue and uh, what could be done. And I believe that our group here, our smaller group, is a great representation of the values and diversity of our school. So we hope you um, will take that into account when listening to what we have to say. I think that any student or parent would agree that self-advocacy, leadership, self-access um, are all important skills to build outside the classroom, which is what we've been exercising through this group. And we hope that you can respect that pursuit. All that being said, it's I think it's also important to remember that this is something we voluntarily devote a lot of our time and our schedules to. We're not elected officials and this is this level of civic engagement is not required of us. We do this because we believe it matters and we find that our um, school agrees. Again, this event is like Sydney said, is meant to serve as a way for us to better understand the variety of questions and concerns of individuals of all opinions. We really wanted this to be um, an honest discussion. We fully respect differing opinions and everyone is, of course, entitled to their own opinion. Uh, we're simply hoping to work towards just some degree of greater understanding on all sides, but we know there may be instances where we can only agree to disagree, and I think that that's okay as well. So we ask that you're respectful and considerate of our team members as they respond to your questions, and please note just a couple things. First of all, uh, this event is recorded. We just are doing that so we can make some highlights of it and basically spread that to a wider audience um, so we can have other people involved in the discussion. And the second thing is that if we do feel a particular comment um, is unproductive, um, and or like discourteous, we may have to take steps to ensure the conversation remains constructive because that really is our uh, top priority here. And that would just involve placing a participant on mute again, or in a worst case scenario, dismissing you from the webinar. But we're really hoping that that won't be the case. Um, so once again, thank you so much for your time. I think we're ready to get going into some of the main questions. So we want to start off the evening by giving you a brief overview of what we've been working on so far and what our initiative is at the heart of it. Um, we'll be sharing this information with you through a series of common questions that come up a lot when we're communicating with people about this initiative. And we've also integrated all of the questions you've asked us before this event began. So if you asked a question um, through the registration process, that will be covered in this presentation. And then after we conclude the presentation, we'll, we will open um, a Q&A session. We're gonna go ahead and kick it off with our first question. Yeah, so our first question is, what steps are necessary to change the name? Honestly, the most straightforward path would be policy revision. We have neighboring counties like Clayton, I know they're renaming two schools, Fulton and Gwinnett, they all have policies that account for naming and renaming their facilities. Marietta City Schools actually in their policy notes that if the board names a facility or area within a facility and it is later determined that the individual or entity for whom the facility slash area is named was not the type of person that would promote the honor and integrity of the facility or the system as a whole, 
the board would have the power to change the name. If we were able to get a policy like that on our board, that would be one step in changing the name. I know there was a little bit of confusion with the committee and the dissolving of the committee. Um, the committee's purpose was to research the names in our area and the buildings in Cobb County and to learn the history behind the name, but it wouldn't have the county for actually going about and changing those names. Um, so we did our own research and we're hoping to get that on the agenda in March. Also look to other schools like Grady, they recently changed their name. We really wanna make sure that the community has a voice in that process and in what the name hopefully gets changed to. Yeah, just adding on to that quickly, when the original decision to name Wheeler back in uh, was 1964, when that decision was made, uh, it was purely pretty much kept to the board to select the name, approve it, and have it just be put on the school. A name change would pose an opportunity for the community to have a say in who or what represents them, which I think should be uh, important. In the case of Grady High School, they had a uh, committee that basically worked to facilitate taking suggestions from the community and having that be voted on. So I think that some structure like that would be important, but like uh, Zoe said, really once we have a policy for Cobb County, there is a clear path. Obviously we will figure out as we go along, this is you know, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And, and when we get to those stages, we'll figure that out. But really our priority again is letting the community have a say in what this name could potentially be. I can kind of start us off here. Feedback from the board has been a struggle to say the least. Um, sometimes we get a response, sometimes we don't, most times we don't. Um, and as Rachel was talking about earlier, our main goal is just to have this open dialogue and to have this conversation. So yeah, that's what we're looking forward to most uh, going into the future, um, getting a return of email, getting to speak to the board members one-on-one -on -one would be um, our top goal. And I think another important thing to mention, um, for those of you who aren't 100% engaged with the school board and what's happening um, co consistently, um, the school board is the only way that we can get a name change to happen. So co cooperation with the school board is extremely important throughout this initiative because they are um, the path to, to completing this goal for us, um, which is why we talk so much about how we've communicated with the school board, what we're hearing from them, all of that. We cannot just change it on our own accord. It goes through them. So I just wanted to add that in. Yeah, and I have just a couple other things to say as well. Um, we did uh, we'll talk about this more in kind of the timeline of some of the work we've been doing, but we did have kind of, um, we made it, uh, public comments at the end of last year, and then we had a couple, we reached out for individual meetings with board members, um, and one of the board members that did respond, uh, which we're uh, great, super grateful to have the opportunity, uh, was Brad Wheeler. Uh, so we had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him, and he was actually fairly uh, open to having a further conversation about it and kind of, um, seeing where it goes. He was the one who proposed the committee uh, and then dissolved it, but I think it is important to note that, you know, he was open to having the conversation with us, first of all, and he suggested to us to do this future research because he wanted to basically there be more information before any decision was made, which I think is a valid response. And uh, maybe that kind of gives more insight into some of their uh, perspectives. Go what ahead, we're Nina. pushing for here, especially with the town hall that we're doing today, is that open dialogue and open communication. A lot of the feedback from the board is just really surrounded in confusion because we don't have straightforward answers for them. We really are pushing for open communication, having one-on-one -on -one meetings with them like we did with Brad Wheeler, just to clear up what, how, what their stance is on this because we really don't know at this point. I wanted to add, also in case you were wondering if you're not familiar with the school board, um, there is seven members on the school board and it's not all of them that are super against us or anything. We are definitely having an open dialogue with members and we have had um, different conversations and some of them are very supportive of us, some of them are hesitant, but we are working with um, board members from all across the county and we are happy to say that we um, have had some great conversations with some of them. So I'm Matthew Norman, I'm once again a senior. Um, so the question is, what research have you done on this initiative? So as the other members have said, Brad Wheeler wanted us to do our own research after they dissolved the committee and then present that to the board in the attempt to, you know, have some concrete proof that there was the surroundings of the name, that sort of thing. Um, the background to the name, the choice behind it. So right here it says, we had that meeting with Brad Wheeler and he suggested to arrange a research presentation. In early January, Caroline Hugh and I, who should be joining soon, um, went to the Cobb archives to look at the board minutes, which 
it sounds weird, but board minutes are basically a collection, like it's a physical book of what happened at those board meetings. And so we looked at through 1960 through 1967, looked at those board minutes. Then late January, we attempted to get our research presentation on the February board meeting agenda because we had it all compiled. And then we were informed that the agenda item proposed by Ms. Davis was rejected in early February. And so going from there, we just had students from Wheeler and some other people, other schools make comments, public comments, telling them that, hey, you know, it was, you guys kind of asked us to do this and then refused to listen to it, that sort of thing. Um, another thing just to add on to this, um, just to kind of clarify about, oh, sorry about that. Um, just to clarify about basically how you get an item on an agenda and kind of what all that entails. Uh, just for some con for important context. The reason we wanted to have this opportunity was once again, we had this presentation ready to go that we thought would basically help the board make a more educated decision uh, about how to proceed with this issue because honestly, we feel like it hasn't really truthfully been fully discussed and acknowledged. And there was the committee that was proposed, didn't meet, and then was dissolved. Um, so I feel like kind of having something and then undoing it is not uh, the kind of acknowledgement that our community feels like we need. So we wanted to have this opportunity to kind of have like a 10 minute block to present our full research rather than a two minute public comment, which anyone can go to. And to have an agenda item, basically there's like a couple uh, ways you can get it approved. It's either through like the chairman and superintendent, uh, superintendent or through like four board members who support that. And one issue we did come across was that Brad Wheeler uh, didn't support it and that would have been uh, our potential like fourth vote. So something that we are once again looking forward in the future, going back to some of the previous questions we were looking at is kind of having more communication about how we can get this research to the board. Okay, so one of the questions we've actually gotten a lot of times is if we have an alternative name that we are suggesting. But at this time, we as a group are actually not recommending a specific name um, to rename the school, just because we feel like part of the reason why um, our school has such a negative name was because it was decided kind of in a closed room decision with the school board um, in 1964. We feel like it's not really our decision. Uh, we're just kind of advocating that the board consider um, changing the name and listen to our reasoning and we feel like it would be better to have the community chime in and kind of have a full dialogue about what the name could be if it were to be changed. Yes, definitely. That's really important to us, uh, the voice of the community. And then the other thing we've also realized throughout this process of the initiative is that with the prospect of names comes a major distraction from the heart of the issue, which is that I guess just we, we aren't being heard as much as we would have liked um, or would like from the board. Um, and so we wanna focus our efforts on getting the board to understand that this is an issue, getting them to evaluate what we've, uh, the information we've provided them and uh, truly listen to our perspectives before we start listing out names. We wanna keep it focused on the priority of the school board for this moment in time. I can start here. So the point of the name change is that we want a name that reflects the value of our student body and the demographics of our student body. We have, if not be one of the most diverse schools in Georgia, and we just don't think that's represented in our namesake. I think another important thing to note is that the name itself is a form of education. Naming a building or school after someone, it it keeps their legacy alive. They learn about like who is this person, what was their legacy, what have they contributed. So I think it's important that we learn about the history and learn about the context behind the names and it's so important and it's something that students at our school think is important. These four questions are kind of getting to the heart of you know the why. This first one, why change the name if the school and county has already taken other steps to promote equality? So once again the main point here uh, which I think gets a little bit confused in conversation is that this isn't just about this isn't about Joseph Wheeler as an individual. Uh, I think you can debate for a very long time about if he was a good person, if he, uh, you know, if his accomplishments after being a Confederate general makes him a good person. Um, I think that there you can debate about if he was you can debate about the morality of him. Right. But I think that that is a separate issue from 
the name of our school. He is not celebrated for the entirety of his life. We found a quote in the first yearbook. This is the place which bears the name of uh, Confederate General Joseph E. Wheeler, who's very much selected just for his role, his that specific position as a Confederate general. Um, his name kind of, especially considering the historical context, uh, given when the name was chosen, uh, this, you know, the struggle, quite frankly, to integrate Cobb County uh, was very significant, and there was a lot of opposition, uh, including the school board, though they passed the vote to integrate uh, like five to one, they, they knew, we looked at, the, once again, Matthew and Caroline looked at those board minutes, and they were very well aware that they would not be getting federal funding if they didn't have a adequate plan to integrate. So, um, you know, then they're presented with this opportunity during that time when there was this, uh, you know, public opposition to integration to name a new school. And it just so happens they choose Joseph Wheeler. He's not very relevant to our area whatsoever, except for his role as a Confederate general. He was a congressman for Alabama. He is just not connected to our community. And that even in our current policy that we have now, states that the person must have made a significant educational, historical, or social contribution in the community, specifically in this community. And he has not made a significant impact uh, in our area outside of uh, his role as a Confederate general, which just shows more and more why he is a symbol of these uh, Confederate ideas and these like anti-integration sentiments. Had this opportunity to put this name on the school and kind of show that we are integrating, but you know we're not necessarily happy about it. And going back to just this, this particular question, the reason we would change the name is that, you know, Wheeler has changed so significantly over time, you know, going from, you know, being 100% white when it opened to now one of the most diverse schools in the nation. And, you know, we celebrate our diversity through an international night. We have an MLK Day assembly. You know, we do uh, honor like Black History Month. Uh, and it's something that's important to us, right? 39% of our student body is black, and, you know, we are so inclusive and diverse, and I think that makes us a really unique community. I've never, I feel like everyone always feels like they belong at Wheeler because everyone is so different. So there's no chance for there to be an us and a them. It's just our diversity is what makes us special. And oh, this would just be an opportunity to really reaffirm that priority rather than have a name that diminishes those successes that we've had over time and the progress that we've made since the 1960s. Um, one thing that I kind of wrote down when I was uh, thinking about what to say here is that it's like an understood but at the end of a sentence right now. Um, it's like, look at how the school celebrates its diversity, but it's named after a Confederate general, which kind of seems to like make people um, uncomfortable. And does that make sense given how diverse this community is and how a Confederate general fought against communities such as ours um, from existing essentially? We could to turn that but into a supporting and and basically have it say, you know, the school celebrates its diversity and in fact, it even changed its name to promote inclusivity. So it's really, you know, our school isn't perfect, uh, but a new name that supports diversity, inclusivity, and excellence would set a standard for us to live up to, to be deserving of the pride our name gives us, um, and basically just serve as a continued motivation to address other concerns within our school. So I want to bring up a little bit on the historical context of the, um, like, you know, you, there's a there was an argument for oh but he changed right around this time this period of time 1964 right that's right before the 100 year anniversary of the Civil War and so you're gonna find in this area and just the South in general you're gonna find a lot of commemorative names for Confederate just anything Confederate so they're gonna have names to celebrate the 100 year anniversary and that sort of thing and so the the school being named right there at the 100 year anniversary is a celebration of the Confederacy, not for who he was. Exactly. And I sort of want to piggyback off of that um, and circle back to what Rachel said earlier, because this is one of the most common misconceptions we see in this initiative is focus on who Joseph Wheeler was as a person and make excuses for him. And I, I came up with this metaphor and you might think it's silly but we we treat these these figures that we honor throughout history almost as if they're people we're going to go on a blind date with that our friend set us up with okay we've heard some not so great things about them but we've heard that they're also you know changing for the better so we might choose to empathize with that person forgive them for their past mistakes 
and and move on uh, celebrating their their change. Um, so even if all of this is true about Wheeler, uh, that he has become less, um, you know, antagonistic to certain groups of people, we also need to consider the fact that this is not someone we're considering having a relationship with. This is not someone who might be our friend. We're not examining their personal qualities. We're examining what this person means as a symbol. The second they put Joseph Wheeler as the name of a school, they froze Joseph Wheeler as a person and put him up exactly as they wanted him to be. So as Rachel said, our yearbook says Confederate General Joseph E. Wheeler. It's very clear what part of, of his life they wanted to honor. And that's a symbol, a name is a symbol. And uh, we're not talking about Joseph Wheeler as a human being. You can try to convince us all day long that he was a great person and he changed and he learned and people do need to change and learn and that's incredible. But as a symbol, it is irrelevant any changes he made throughout his life. And I wanted to just talk about the representation or the lack of representation. Um, I talked about earlier how namesakes are a form of education in themselves. And of the schools in Cobb County that are named after people, um, I'm not sure there's one, if there are, that are named after people of color. And I think it's important that students, especially at our school, how we have students of all different cultures and creeds and colors, have someone they can point to in history and see themselves in. Um, and so in that regard, I think that students are affected. And as you're growing up, you're looking to society and you're looking in your community to find yourself and to find your niche. Um, so I just think people should think about what it says to students of color that there are no individuals who've been bestowed this kind of like public honor of having a building or a school named after them. I think it, that would definitely affect students, not just students of color, but all students. And I think that it's an opportunity um, for education and for growth. Yeah, and just uh, continuing with this slide, again, seeing the diversity of our school and kind of seeing the context surrounding what the name was intended to represent and what it continues to represent, um, that disparity, um, we believe is the heart of the issue. And then our next question, which is a, a big one that we get as well, um, is wouldn't changing the name uh, erase the history that is recognized by this name? Zoe, did you actually want to start off on this one? Did you want to start off? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to talk about, I went into a dive in the beginning of our initiative about Joseph Wheeler and his history um, and learned that he actually has a house. It's called the Palm Springs Plantation. It's owned by the Alabama Historic Commission. Um, and I actually called and had a conversation via email um, with one of the staff there who told me about his life and he told me about his wife and, you know, what he did after. And so uh, the people who say that, you know, we, we learn from history, we are learning from history. I mean, his history is documented. You just have to go and look for it and it's there. And so um, I don't think that we're uh, erasing history at all. At all. I think that we are recognizing where we may have made some mistakes in the past and rectifying those mistakes. Yeah, and also I think it does, uh, obviously I think, you know, Joseph Wheeler and his role as his, in history shouldn't go unacknowledged. And I think, you know, the civil war and its impact in American history um, should be like, you know, avidly taught and discussed. And it is, you know, included in the curriculum in our schools for that reason, but it is very different when it is, of a you know a public building right there's a certain degree of public honor um, that that name is given then it, it you know it's important if we see this issue in how we are who, what values we are publicly honoring then i think it is important to still find a fitting name because uh, that would be us acknowledging and learning from history and saying you know this we don't need to support these kinds of ideals uh, into the future. Kind of just to summarize this up is that, you know, this initiative is, is about exposing it and reconsidering who and what and how we honor people, how we choose to reflect that history um, and what that means for the future uh, is what's kind of in need of remaking. And picking back, piggybacking off of what you guys were mentioning, I think it's um, also important that the fact that the school was originally named after Joseph Wheeler is never forgotten just because it's such a major kind of 
um, historical moment um, for this area. And I think that it's important that going forward, you know, students know that like this was what the name was, even if the name is to change. I think it's important that we always discuss how it used to be Joseph Wheeler. And I think that, you know, there could be a plaque or something that could um, commemorate that and how um, the county could represent or recognize that how that was wrong and how they decided to change course and change the name. And I think that would be a great way to, you know, keep the Joseph Wheeler, you know, kind of history without recognize him, recognizing him as a positive symbol. So as, we, as we've mentioned earlier, we really value community input in this. And so we didn't want to ignore such a large part of the Wheeler community, which is the alumni. So we have made um, a sufficient effort on our part to reach out to alums um, of all ages, ones that graduated just last year, and some that have graduated in 81. And they, some of them are in Georgia, some are in Michigan or Seattle. So we have made an effort to reach out. We've gotten people that recognize um, that Joseph Wheeler was a Confederate general, and they realized when they were in high school. And wish they had an avenue to change the name like we are doing now. We've had people who have had to kind of step back and reevaluate their priorities and look at the name from a different perspective. Um, lots of people, it's been overwhelmingly positive. And all of them pretty much have said that they would see this as a source of pride. Looking back, their school is making efforts to be more inclusive, to be more positive, and for students to be more welcomed rather than keeping with the ideals that our name represents right now. I also wanted to add really quick that the name of our school did not contribute to all of the accolades of our school. And what I mean by that is that it's the students, the teachers, and the staff who have worked to have these great test scores and to have, you know, all the things that our school is known for. So I think that, you know, changing the name to something that positively reflects our values now would almost enrich that history even more. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add that. And I did wanna say, if you are interested in seeing alum responses directly, um, I've sat down with quite a few, and um, those that are interested have recorded video statements, which are on our Facebook and Instagram. So you can go see what they think directly from the alums themselves. Yes, and on that same vein, we've really appreciated all of the people reaching out and saying that they're interested in helping us support uh, or helping support us, um, and that means a ton. So if you go to our website, um, we have uh, an email campaign where you can write members of the board and uh, give them your personal experience. It's really great to continue to remind the school board over and over that people throughout the community are interested and in fighting for this um, this name change. We appreciate everyone who has helped us continue to do that through our email campaign. Um, you've also probably seen several of us make public comments at um, the board meetings. Um, so if you're ever interested in making a public comment, if you feel like you have something uh, really important to share from your point of view, we'd love to start a conversation with you about getting you um, to make a public comment on behalf of our initiative. And finally, we're all over social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, so when you can spread the word, if there's a post you really like, um, please repost it, tell other people about this initiative and help us spread the word because uh, that's how we are getting more people informed about um, what we're doing. And then really quickly, I wanted to make sure everyone was aware that there's a Q&A feature on um, this webinar application. So you just go to the questions bar and you can type in any question and then we're gonna answer it aloud. So I'm gonna exit from the presentation right now and we're gonna go back to our regular call and we're gonna start with the Q&A. So thank you to everyone who has already written a question. We're gonna go ahead and start with those first. Um, so the first question we got is, in the event this isn't rectified this school year, what is the plan to continue this movement? Does Caroline maybe want to start? We haven't heard her yet. This is Caroline. She's the soccer girl we talked about earlier. <laughs> Sorry, I look like a mess because I came from a soccer game. But we've actually already planned for this. We know that it probably won't end up resolving itself by the end of our graduating year. And as they said, most of us are seniors. 
Um, but we have been talking to a talented, wonderful group of current underclassmen in the school. And Zoe is a junior, so she'll be leading it. Um, so we've set up a framework for, um, I think we've got like a dozen or so um, kids who are ready to jump on this in the next year and keep pushing it, keep going to board meetings, keep emailing, and it's going to continue as long as it takes. I'm trying to look and get questions that we haven't touched on yet. We got a question about, have we gotten a written response from the board after you spoke at their meetings? So Caroline can also talk about that as well. Yes, um, I did receive a written response. It was about two sentences and it basically said, we heard you and that was about it. Um, there was no details, just saying that uh, the board is, the, basically the board heard your comment. That's not the exact phrasing, but it was definitely not what we were looking for. And from there, we haven't, had much of a response from the board members. I'm sure they've talked about this. You're good. All right. So this next question is more of a comment. It says, most of the history that alumni worry about has nothing to do with Joseph Wheeler. It's their history with the school and the fact that they would feel disenfranchised because their alma mater would be no more. So we actually got that sort of wording in a lot of questions, I think, is why are you trying to get rid of my school or my alma mater will be no more? The building's still going to be there. The community of students that you participated in is still going to be there. Those memories are 100% still there. And, you know, we talk about a house is not a home, that sort of thing. It matters so much more, the community of students and the strength of, of the students and our faculty. And I just don't, I don't really understand the phrasing of, my school's going to be gone because that hasn't er that hasn't erased. When you moved out of your your childhood home, uh, did your entire childhood disappear? Um, no. So that's sort of the angle we approach it from. And I think Caroline sort of talked about this a little bit. Most of us are seniors, so we're all going to be alums too. And yet, each day we are actively working towards this name change. So I think it's it's the perspective of realizing that this school is so much more than a name, but it can be so much more with a different name. Um, so I encourage you to think through that lens a little bit. I don't know, does anyone else have anything yeah, to add I on to that? Add that there's nothing stopping you from just referring to it as formerly known as Wheeler High School. Like Wheeler, saying Wheeler High School is not gonna be banished. You don't have to burn all your t-shirts that say Wheeler across it is more than okay to stay formerly known as Wheeler High School. So the name itself does not have to disappear out of your lives for alums. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna move on to the next question. It was, can you name a school that had community involvement in the name? Rachel actually already talked about that. Grady High School had um, a survey, right? It was a three question survey. Do you wanna talk about that a little bit? Yeah, um, so I actually contacted the board member for Atlanta Public Schools that um, headed up the renaming um, of Grady High School. And they said that it has been going on for years. And for them, um, it was mainly the students in the school um, knew the history of Grady and didn't feel it uh, represented their school, uh, very similar to what's happening right now, and um, had been pushing the board to look into renaming. And um, after, I think it was their election, um, they really got the ball rolling and sent out a three question survey to the community, to the school, to teachers, um, and is basically saying, um, how do you feel about a name change and what are potential names? Um, and they had them vote on the various names and they ended up choosing a Midtown High School. And that happened earlier this year and the board members there were saying how it has been a struggle, but it really helps that they were all on board and that they communicated with their community and with their students. So it's definitely showing that it is possible and it doesn't have to be a major production. It doesn't have to be like a drawn out process, um, it, but it works better if everyone can work together. This question, have you considered publishing your research into the history of naming the school in lieu of publicly presenting at a board meeting? So we did sort of talk about this a little bit. Um, Rachel clarified that what we were trying to do was get on the agenda for a 10 minute presentation for our research and that board agenda was rejected and did not make it onto um, the agenda for the meeting. Um, okay, so since uh, this person feels that it's not a balanced debate, I'm gonna go ahead and read his uh, question, comment. You guys 
as usual, have not made this a balanced debate. I think it is reverse racism to attack the name of the school because a general served in the Civil War. Does someone want to talk on that a little bit? I can start. You know, that's why we want to have this conversation. But I will add that we've harped on, I feel like, extensively that this is not about who Joseph Wheeler was as a person. It's about our community, our school, and the ideals that we want to um, embrace and carry into the future. I uh, haven't heard why having our school named after Confederate General positively impacts our students or community or aids us in any way. So uh, I'm a bit confused on some of the dissenting viewpoints. Uh, if you guys could elaborate on the positives, that would be helpful. But again, we've, we've discussed extensively that it's not about who he was as a person, we could go on all day, as Rachel has said, about morality behind the issue. Yeah, I also don't think that this is necessarily a race issue. We're not attacking him because, like, he's a white man. This is really just because of, once again, just like Zoe was saying, too, um, what ideals he represented, how that doesn't align with our uh, current views, right? And I think you know, even the, like the community's current views, I'd say, you know, uh, Cobb is, you know, they, on their Instagram account, they're posting things, you know, celebrating Black History Month. Like, I think we've made a lot of progress as a county and as a community. So it's really just, once again, it's about the, the disparity between what he was intended to represent back in the 60s and how that doesn't currently align with our views uh, today. A name change would be an opportunity for us to come together as a community for a positive change. Yeah. And then I know there are also a couple other things that this individual is saying, if, if we're okay uh, addressing those, saying some things just like, you know, you guys are 17, 18 years old. You have no idea about the true history of this school. I think from the alumni we have talked with, we have heard a lot of some stories about some of the more like personal history of the school. You know, we heard about renovations that took place and just you know, what the different experience is like. We talked to someone who, you know, their whole school experience, they were going out in, you know, trailers uh, in the parking lots. Uh, so I do believe that through this, um, through the work that we've been doing, we have learned a lot about that personal history of the school, but also we've learned a lot about the history of the naming of the school, which was um, something that, you know, even the current board members really wanted to have information on. Um, you know, going to the Cobb County archives, we really put in a lot of effort to educate ourselves about what the, you know, what the naming was and everything we found supported the fact that he is just not uh, the ideal individual for us to bestow this like public honor to. Um, another thing I want to address really quickly is we've gotten several things about being northern liberals and we got a question about how long have we lived in Cobb County. Um, I've lived in Cobb County since I was one and a half years old. I think I'd like to jump back to Rachel's disclaimer at the very beginning. Each and every one of us are high school students. We dedicate our lives to school. Um, I know for one, I am blowing off a lot of homework to be here tonight and everyone else is too. We work pretty much nonstop and I don't remember the last time I watched a TV show and I think that that's probably true for most of the people on this panel. So we aren't here because we were sent by, um, by politicians, we, you know, it, all of this, I just want to make it clear to everyone watching that we are students who genuinely care about this, which is why we are spending time researching, spreading words with the community and, and, and doing all we can to be as engaged in this movement as possible. So that's really all I had to say about that. We've gotten um, a few comments about alums in the chat, um, in the Q&A, those who support and do not. Um, we have made an effort to reach out, and I am more than willing to sit down for 20 minutes to have a more personal conversation. If you would like, just please reach out, and we can have a respectful conversation about it instead of arguing back and forth in the Q&A. Yeah, okay. I have another uh, good question. Um, this person says, you say that it's not about who Joseph Wheeler was as a person, then why would you want to change the name? That doesn't make any sense. Well, it sort of goes back to what I was saying earlier about how we're evaluating uh, Joseph Wheeler as the symbol, not the person. The second his name was put on a high school, he became a symbol. So that's why I was making those comments about how it isn't about his personal growth. It isn't about, you know, whether or not he changed or who he was or if, if morally he was a good person or not. It was, it was the board's intention 
to intimidate students coming in after integration by naming a, a Cobb County school after a Confederate general. He symbolizes hatred towards diversity and he embodies the fear that those students had to face each day they walked into the school building. That's why we say he, he, it doesn't matter who he was as a person. This is not a discussion about whether Joseph Wheeler is, is made good decisions or not. It's a discussion about, is this a symbol we really want to have on our school where students are meant to grow and learn and embrace themselves and find self-confidence and, and move into their adulthood, is that a symbol we really want to be weighing on their shoulders each day when they walk into the school building? Just looping back to a couple of the other things we have rolling in, I think maybe what I mentioned was um, misunderstood. We have someone saying like, what about Kell High School, Pope High School and Harrison High School? They were all white guys. And I'm, I'm saying like, I don't think that they deserve, you know, to be changed, right? Like, some of those people were the people who, you know, granted the land. There's a very immediate connection to the high school. You know, Joseph Wheeler is not very relevant to our community and having a more relevant individual geographical feature, whatever it may be, uh, could enhance our sense of pride or recognition with this uh, name that symbolizes ideals that don't align with the community and what we celebrate in our school, then that that would pose need to reevaluate the name. I was just going to say, um, we have another question, and I'll read it to you guys. Back in the 70s, there were no students of color in our school because they did not live here. That's not true. It was actually during that time period that the Cobb County Board of Education paid to bus um, students of color to myriad of city schools because they did not want to integrate their own schools. Let me go off of that. The school is called Lemon Street High School. It's in Marietta Public School. The government was giving Cobb County money to fund these students to integrate the school system. Cobb County had a contract with Marietta Schools where they said, okay, you take our African-American students, we'll give you all the money that the government gives us to keep them. So they sent them all to Lemon Street High School and they stayed there. That's why there weren't any African-American students in higher ed tier education in Cobb County. One of the questions we got is, what do you find as the significance of this being a student-driven movement, as this fits into the larger community, and this being a decision that's so heavily dependent on seven board members? Um, if, if it's okay if I chime in. One thing that I think would be really important to have this, you know, like properly acknowledged in some way and kind of have like a larger discussion about this with the board is that it shows that they, you know, value the students that they represent and it shows that they value, you know, the opinions of the people they're working for. And I think that that is really the significance of that being like a student driven movement. I think it shows just kind of how important it is to us as a community. I think also Wheeler is a special case because it now has the magnet program. So technically we have students that are, they live in districts that are like a different school board posts, which basically means that they vote for different representatives on the board rather than just our real representative, which is Ms. Davis. Technically, we are represented by like a larger portion of the county because we have so many individuals who are voting for different representatives. So they also deserve to kind of have that say. So there's a question I want to address from um, someone who's already left, unfortunately, but I think there's a good point to be made. Just so the question is that Wheeler and that the school is known in the state country by it is known for being a diverse school and that by changing the name it might jeopardize it being this known diverse school. It may be a better example to change the negativity to accept the name as we do with our own names and lead with positivity with our own school and not tear down just its name. I'm going to say it's actually going to do the opposite based on what we've seen in media and across the country with other name changes. It's not going to make people forget about Wheeler because, oh wait, Wheeler doesn't exist anymore, this diverse school, what happened to it? What we've seen across the country is these schools that change their name get a lot more attention. And then they're like, oh wow, this school like in Chicago or something like that is very diverse, that sort of thing. They get more recognition for that sort of thing. We wouldn't be forgotten by changing our name. I just had two quick ones that I wanted to address if possible, because I know we do have a lot to go through. One of them we got was there's so much topic of civil war names being a statement of segregationist, but it was also the hundredth anniversary of the civil war, which was fought in this area. I feel like if they were trying to like honor the civil war, I feel like a civil war, first of all, I feel like they would have made that more 
like known. I feel like that, you know, maybe that would have been stated in one of the board meeting notes that would have been stated in um, the yearbook quote, maybe saying something like, you know, on this 100th anniversary of the Civil War, we've opened with the name of a Confederate general, something like that. Uh, but it's not noted. The context that we've been seeing uh, just doesn't align with that. There even was like a petition after the name was changed, after the name was selected, that was basically advocating for a name change. Was some a lot of the supplemental materials were not saved in the archives, um, but we do have the dates. Um, so March 1st, the Cobb voted to integrate um, 1965, and then March 10th, the same year, 1965, just a couple of days later, the petition was brought to the board um, to change the name of Wheeler High School. I believe there were 113 signatures, um, but again, we don't have a copy of that. The fact that there was a petition kind of indicates that maybe it wasn't to celebrate the Civil War because if that was something that the community wanted and that was what their stance was, uh, I feel like that there wouldn't have been a petition about it, if that makes sense. Next quick other one, is anyone worthy of having a building named after them? We obviously want this to be left up to the community to really have the final say on that, but it could just be a plain geographical figure so it's not uh, reliant on someone's reputation. Yeah, I wanted to say really quickly, because there's a lot of discussion about, you know, the percentage of Black people during that time, whether they were bust in, bust out, all of these things, and I'm not quite sure how this discussion is serving the argument that having our school named after Joseph Wheeler is positive. I know I brought up earlier that, you know, there are no schools of the schools that are named after people, that are named after people of color. Um, and so for, you know, those of us that are talking about, you know, the diversity of the school back then, um, the demographics, what it looked like, I think that that should be something that should be considered, like, if we have community members and other people who made significant contributions, I think that that should also be recognized. But we're going to kind of jump to some of the other questions that people have had. Um, I'll read one and then I'll let you uh, take it, Zoe. Um, this one was, regardless of anyone's opinion on this specific name change, do you think there is a hesitancy in Cobb's board to outline a process for it for how the name change would happen? I think the hesitancy comes from the fact that uh, the name has ties to the Civil War and can be seen as a racial issue, um, for lack of a better word. I think that's really where the hesitancy is coming from. Um, we've heard people, you know, bring up like, why is this such an issue? You know, this is not important. And one of the things that we were discussing earlier was like, well, if this is not a big thing, why, why the pushback? Why is it taking so long to even get a discussion started? Like, we're not even talking about policy or revision or voting or discussing a name. We're talking about just discussing the name to begin with. Um, this is a really good question. We got, has there been any thought given to the cost of changing the name, such as switching out all of the signage around and in the buildings? Would there be need, would there need to be funds raised for this? I'll hop on that. And that's certainly one of the things that we have talked about before. And it's something worth noting that there is a cost to changing the name of a school, however worthy it is to change the name. And I think that's definitely something to be discussed in the future. But the Cobb County Board of Education isn't telling us, like, hey, like we like support this idea or whatever, or we're interested in it, but we don't have the funds for that. They're just not really engaging with it. And so I think that's something that can happen, a conversation that can happen further down the line. But right now, that's not the excuse that's been given. Right now, we just need to focus on getting this conversation on the table. Um, and another thing I wanted to mention, I do have a lot of comments about busing in Cobb County, and I did misspeak and say the 70s when that was in the 60s. So we got a good question too that we got, there are a lot of Wheeler High School alumni that are famous. If you look them up on Wikipedia, have you tried reaching out to these alumni for support? Nina, do you want to talk a little bit about Jalen Brown? Yeah, so we did reach out to Jalen Brown, who is pretty much our most notable alum. And he was one of those alums who realized in high school that his high school was named after a Confederate general and wished there was something he could do about it. So he was very supportive and thankful that we are trying to raise awareness about this. And if you look on our website, you can see there's a clip from a press conference where he brought it up that this is an important cause that he supports. So we have had public support from a lot of our alums. Okay, we've gotten one person who's really interested in unmuting to talk for a little bit. 
Um, so we've got about three minutes left, so I'm going to unmute him, and um, you should have access to speak. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I want to let you all know just, so I'm a Wheeler alum, class of 2003. My name is John Payne, um, and I am extremely proud of all of you on the call. Like, it's amazing just how, you know, put together you guys are. Um, it's amazing, you know, very thoughtful approach to a lot of your responses. I can tell you this means a lot to you. Um, really, I'm just really impressed, to be honest with you. Um, on the flip side, too, I just want to explain to you, unfortunately, I'm on the opposite side of the fence as far as my take on the name change, but that's just because of my love for the school, okay? It's not for, you know, Joseph E. Wheeler, his history, his name, that means really nothing to me. It's really more just the name of Wheeler High School. And so, you know, I grew up off Lower Roswell Road, uh, East Valley Elementary. Um, I actually wrote the East Valley Pledge, which they actually said every morning for like a decade at that school. I think they got rid of it now, but. Um, no you know, way, I said that for five years at East Valley. That's yeah, there you go. Well, I, was John, I was John Lewis Payne. I was the author of that when I was a fifth grader. They had a contest and I, and I won that contest, so. Yeah, so, and you know, I played junior cats basketball. Uh, I didn't, obviously we're great at basketball, so I ended up doing baseball all year round. Played for the legendary coach Dave McDonald. Um, you know, I was actually in the first magnet class um, in 2003. They actually allowed just students within the actual school district to kind of sign up and I got into magnet. And so we were kind of the, we would call ourselves the guinea pig class, but I actually took some of the first classes in that magnet classroom, you know, took the first science classes, math classes in there. So pretty cool stuff. But anyways, it was some of the best times of my life. And so, um, you know, you guys have actually brought up a lot of things on this call that have made me kind of think differently on some stuff, which I really am grateful for. I really like, uh, you know, y'all's approach. But I do think, um, you know, I am very big in the sense that a name doesn't make us who we are, that we define the name. And, you know, you guys mentioned just how decorated we are as far as how diverse our school is. So my junior year, we were actually featured, so that was 2002, we were actually featured in USA Today of uh, being the most diverse school in the country. And number two behind us was some school in Los Angeles. So you think about how urban LA is, right? We had almost 100 countries represented by our student body. We had a flag within in the cafeteria that represented every student based on you know what country they were from, and we were pr we were proud of that. I mean, it was um, it was a big deal, and you know I think other schools within Cobb County, within the state, even outside and you know the rest of the country, I think they looked at Wheeler with a regard in the sense that you know we were um, you know, we just kind of walked differently, if you will. I mean, we were different than the others, so. Um, I also just want to point out, we have a fantastic brand, right? And so the conversations, and Zoe made a good point, like sometimes people will throw out a comment and it doesn't really help the conversation, right? And so I think what we really need to do is try to find common ground, right? Try to find the middle, because that's where you can really find a compromise, okay? And so, you know, in listening to y'all, I'm energized to help you guys out, but what I'm what I'm hoping is that maybe we can find some sort of middle ground. And so in my mind, I'm sitting here thinking, Joseph E. Wheeler, that that has nothing to do with me. I don't stand for that. You know, when I went to school there, we didn't embody anything that he stood for, right? And obviously I want every student to feel like they're in a nurturing place to grow and learn. So maybe this would be my compromise. And maybe and maybe this is something that we could you know, it would resonate and it could maybe stick and we can, you know, actually have something happen to where it's a really positive story, but we don't hurt the other folks on the other side of the fence. And maybe that's the Joseph E part. Maybe that's what we need to drop. But the everything we've done, everything that everybody's walked through those hallways that has done being a Wheeler Wildcat, like I really don't want to lose Wheeler. It means a lot to me. And I know it means a lot to a lot of other alumni. Um, but to me, I feel like that's maybe the middle ground where if y'all, you know, if you, you guys can kind of listen to that and maybe hear that side of my story, maybe we can all unite. And I, like, I would love to help you guys out in that sense. But for me, 
I would try to preserve Wheeler and try to preserve that brand and know that, you know, what Wheeler stands for is what every, like every student, they made a great contribution, no matter whether, whether it was 1965 or, you know, now in 2021. So I say maybe, maybe it's Joseph E is that what needs to be let go, but we can keep Wheeler. So that's just my piece, but I really appreciate everything you guys are doing. And then again, if that's something that sounds interesting to you, I'm more than happy to help you guys out. I'm more than happy to help you in front of the board, help you with anything. I mean, you don't look like you need much help, but really all I'm doing is just trying to say, hey, let's try to find more common ground, like a middle place, and then we don't have to hurt anybody's feelings and actually everybody can feel good about the change. So that's just my two cents, but thank you so much for everything you guys are put together tonight. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciated your comment. And I know we discussed earlier that we didn't want to dive into name alternatives because we didn't want to distract from what we feel is the heart of the issue. Or, and we really wanted um, people to see that you know, in our struggles with the board and trying to get this moving that um, we didn't want, you know, discussions about what the name should be to be a distractor, but we definitely have considered that. We've had community members, you know, pitch ideas. So it's something that's on the table. It's just that we are trying to get the ball rolling with the board and having conversations with the board, even about things like that. Um, so yeah, but I really appreciate your comment. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so it's a little bit past time, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap us up. But again, I wanted to say, oh, go ahead, Caroline. I just wanna say, I know I came here late um, and I have done a ton of the research. So I, we've had a couple of Q and A's about that. So if you do wanna talk with me about what we have learned or things that you know and like to contribute, go ahead and email us. I would love to talk with you about what I've been researching, what Matthew's been researching. Um, but we don't have time here to discuss it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, this this has been a really good conversation and I'm kind of glad that it went over time because it shows us that this conversation needs to continue and that there's a lot of opinions that need to be heard. So I'm, I'm really glad, um, but I am a little bit tired. So we are gonna finish it out. Um, I just wanted to say again, please do not hesitate to email us. Be sure to check us out on, um, our, our website and all of our social medias to get um, some more information. I hope that you all felt like you learned a little bit more about our initiative and um, and we just really appreciate you being here to listen to us. We're looking to do another one of these in the future. Um, so we were hopeful that you all would attend that as well. Um, so again, stay tuned, try to keep up with what we're doing because we wanna continue this conversation. Um, and we look forward to doing that. So again, thank you guys and have a wonderful evening.